Welcome back to Replicants. This is Michael Merle. It's October 21st, 2024, and we're back with another market update. All right, we're finally getting somewhere. This is really significant, and it seems that Bitcoin has finally been able to breach this cluster of resistance that it's been battling with for a good part of six months now. And at the current time, it's trading around uh, short of 70 k but at 68,329 as I'm recording this. And wow, things look very positive. So I've already drawn the expected move ranges for last week and this week, because this is extremely interesting, because if you look at these, which I believe is in blue, <laughs> you know me and my color vision. Uh, well, let me just point at them. These are the expected move ranges for last week. So what does that mean? Well, somewhere here in the middle, we started the week, right? And within one session, we breached right above it. And that's usually what's called the point of recognition. And what I mean by that is that when an inflection point like that, and also keep in mind that we also have technical support here. Well, support now used to be resistance and we sliced right through it and left it behind and then continued to just climb higher a little bit every day. And here we are now, we're on 68K. It's interesting because most likely what's going to happen, and that's my perspective, having seen this over and over again, we either fall back and get trapped back in, which I think at this stage, it's probably a 30% probability, or we retest a little bit here, maybe dip lower, scare the children a little bit, and then continue higher. You can see the new expected move ranges are, well, they're quite a bit higher now. They have shifted significantly. And we're now seeing support here, again, expected move, one cent deviation based on recent price volatility. We see support now somewhere around 60, what is that, 65.5, hmm? which is not too far away what, from what used to be upper resistance last week. So right there, we can see that it's been a significant shift in the market dynamics. Hmm? We've basically moved the entire range from last week and just boom, moved it, moved it higher right, in a stepping pattern. That is very positive. That's very bullish. And well, let's draw some correlations to what has happened before. Before we kind of were inching our way up, retest a little bit and carefully crawl a bit higher and get punched down. Before that, well, here we actually made a beeline for it, admittedly, but fell right back. But again, this wasn't really established yet. So let's not fall prey to you know, hindsight bias. This wasn't really strong yet, but yes, there was some upside resistance already present at that point, and we immediately failed it. And before that, well, I guess this doesn't really count because this was still in the formation phase. So I'm looking at this especially, and, and this and this right here as precedent of what has happened before. And we spent a lot more time crawling around in the upper ranges last time. Here, we just busted higher. If you're just looking at price action, if you just read the price action, very confidently, pushing higher, pushing higher, pushing higher. We don't see much resistance just yet, but that doesn't mean it's not going to kick in. There might be some strong sellers up here and we might get pushed down again. I assume that if that happens, that most likely we're going to find support around here, 65K. But if you fail that and we fall below, then, well, we're right back to the old pattern. Then we're going to be extending these lines quite a bit further. I don't really have the impression this is going to happen this time. It's hard to read the future, of course. It's impossible to read the future. <laughs> uh, if you try to do that in the market, well, you'll get your hiney handed to you in most cases. So we're going to just have to go with the flow here and read the tape. But so far, all I can say, it's looking very positive, okay? Let's look at Ethereum. All right. Similar pattern, actually. Well, it's been always the weaker of, of the two leading coins in the market. It hasn't really gone anywhere. And it was useful to us in producing a nice support zone here around, what is that, 2,300? There's strong support now that it has built. And it's going to be useful in the future, no matter what happens, because we have so much context here. And when it comes to technical trading like that, context is everything. Everything happens in context. And everything that happens needs to be understood and read in context. Why? Well, there are no ironclad rules, of course. But you and I, we all look at charts. A lot of people, millions of people look at charts. We all have a similar way of interpreting them. We still have our price activity down here. We recognize that as support. It's just the way it is. If we all didn't think this way, well, then support probably wouldn't be holding up and the market would move in different ways. Makes sense, right? It's kind of like the tail wagging the dog or the other way around. I'm not sure. It's just the way it is. <laughs> and all we know is that we have support on here. 
It's been holding up very nicely. It's progressing nicely, but again, it's trailing Bitcoin. Hmm? I mean, let's actually take a look real quick at Ethereum Bitcoin and see what we get. Hmm? All right. So yeah, you know, I mean, we see a little push here, but it's it's meager. It's still very weak. So uh, coming back actually to Ethereum USD real quick. So again, we have a similar pattern where the entire expected move range has shifted higher. It seems to be, I'm just going to do this visually here, honestly, with my two fingers. I haven't measured it uh, numerically. But it looks, it looks like to me that in terms of volatility, we're looking at a similar range as last week. This has held up nicely. That's positive. We are starting the week in the center here, but haven't moved yet. So again, it's it's trading a little bit. We'll see what happens. We've got quite a while to go. May I also point out that again, this line, which was generated by my spreadsheet that I post every week right here. Let's see. So if you're looking at these numbers, that's the expected move ranges for all the major coins under Binance. I'm using Binance symbols for that. So I've also highlighted Bitcoin and Ethereum for you. So it's very simple. If you want to use that to your advantage, which I strongly encourage you should. Here's the upper range. Here's the lower range. You just plunk that on your chart via a horizontal line, either way you want to draw it. I don't care. <laughs> and that gives you a pretty good idea of what the market expects in terms of volatility, in terms of the weekly range. This is a weekly range that I calculate every week. Borrow that idea from options trading, where of course, and I say this every week as a disclaimer, we're using implied volatility. In this case, we're not using implied volatility yet, although I have to say this has worked very well so far. Can't complain. I mean, it lines up very nicely with my technicals every week, and uh, there seems to be definitely some magic to it. So. I mean, it's clear to say that if we're pushing higher, that we're going to run into resistance here. And this resistance line, it lines up very nicely. So this is good. OK, it's a good to keep an eye on. In the meantime, here with the theorem, at least, we're kind of no man's land. Anything can happen. We can get pushed down right now again and retest again. But I say that as long as we remain above the lower support zone here, which is right now around 25, 7, so 2,570, if we stay above it, we might slip through it quickly, but if we close the week above it, I think it's very positive and we have a good base again to work our way higher. Still, though, Ethereum is still the weaker of the two. OK, let's not forget that. Not the instrument to be in right now, but definitely the instrument to keep an eye on. Definitely. Right. Total three. Also very interesting. So if you remember what I said two weeks ago and then I again reconfirmed last week, this was extremely positive. What happened in the interim is actually very, very important because it reflects again what I suggested to you. I think it was a week ago, might have been two weeks ago, but I said this is a great spot to buy. The retest of such a nice channel of an upper resistance cluster of this, you know, falling diagonal here. A retest like that is usually mana from heaven because it's a great place to structure a trade, to structure an entry, put a stop down here, and then basically just buy right here and wait for the market either to prove you right or wrong. In my experience, it's around 70% of the time. It actually is a great spot to buy. And you very quickly, which I also appreciate, being either proven wrong or right, which I like. I don't like to be stuck in a trade forever. There's this thing to be said about a certain time range in which you know whether or not the market is going to prove you wrong or you're on the right side of the trade. If you have to wait weeks and weeks, well, those are assets you could deploy somewhere else much more effectively. So I like this pattern. It worked very well in this case. Perfect. If you took it, congrats, because it is busting higher. Of course, again, as I said before, you cannot trade total three. You would have to look at some leading altcoins. And I've spoken about that as well in regards to how that could be traded. Uh, look at my market update from last week where I covered that. I'm not going to cover that this week. So um, I also wanted to show you real quick uh, about my various systems. Um, it's right here. So this is basically Veritas. It's right now at back at 37K. Again, we discussed it on multiple occasions that I think it actually endured this really difficult period, market period very nicely. You know, I don't know what your perspective is on these things, but you can't really call swings like that. You can't. And uh, any system that survives a market like that intact is a good system to me. And you can tell what it has done over the last four years. It's performed really well, actually. So that's Veritas. Again, it's a trend signal. It tells us whether or not we should be in cash or we should be in Bitcoin, Ethereum or in altcoins. Right now, we're actually in Bitcoin. So it's looking good. And this is Gravitas, which only trades Bitcoin short and long. And again, we're back to a little bit below 100K. Uh, the profits are here. Bitcoin is here on the right side to graph, right? Bitcoin USD. 
And yeah, it's, it's looking sweet. It's looking sweet. It's of course also long right now. No secret there. And one more graph I wanted to show you. This one you've seen already, but this is actually my local file system. So that's the same graph that I showed you. That's actually live. By the way, I post all my profit charts live. You can look at them every day They're right here. So the URLs are here, gravitas underscore Bitcoin underscore returns, PNG. And then here, this is the same for Veritas. Right? Similar URL, it's uh, under, actually it's called Veriturns PNG, again, under replicons.com slash crypto. So maybe pause the video, look at these URLs and uh, you can find them in your browser. This is local because I obviously render a bunch of graphs out and also want to show you this one here. So that's basically Bitcoin versus Veritas cumulative returns over the last four years. So it gives you an idea. This is basically hodling down here, right? If you would have just bought Bitcoin right here where you would be right now in terms of profits, if you would have bought a thousand dollars. And this is basically <laughs> what you would have made with Veritas. So yeah. And what else? Also this graph right here, this is the CIGR. And that's for each year, 2020, all the way through 2024. Okay, that's all I got for you this week. Again, stick with the charts, stick with the signals, Gravitas, Veritas, and other signals that we send you. And don't try to outguess the market because it's just gonna backfire. I know because I've tried it. We should always focus on the overall trend. Right now, the trend is with Bitcoin. It's looking good. Everything's working in our favor. We've got a pretty good read on the market. And trying to go on social media or other sites, trying to listen to the gurus, um, trying to predict the future, that usually backfires. Our systems all work for one main reason. They follow the trend. And they don't care too much about the minute little wheels in between. And that's really how you win in the crypto market, in particular because it's a very volatile market. Okay? All right, that's all for this week, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.